Uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this online intelligence briefing. Today, uh, a number of experts from across James will be presenting, uh, a, a top, presenting on the topic of uh, counter and manned aircraft systems, and will provide a technical outlook uh, for global capabilities. And the James Intelligence Briefing Program uh, will consist of approximately 40 events during 2017, and is available to all customers of James Intelligence Center and module products, including the market's forecast products. I'd like to highlight the information used to compile today's uh, presentation has been drawn from a variety of James content. Uh, for example, uh, I'll highlight the James Defense Industry and Markets Intelligence Center, uh, which uh, you can see the information on your screen and how to, how to access that. As UAVs have become increasingly commercially available, militant groups have used these UAVs in theaters of conflict in, in a variety of contexts. Mostly, they have been used by militants for reconnaissance and propaganda purposes, but increasingly, the UAVs are being used to conduct attacks on the militants' adversaries. For example, Islamist militant group Jund al-Aqsa released a video in September 2016 reportedly showing a UAV dropping small, unguided explosive devices targeting military positions in Hama Governor in Syria. The video footage released by the Islamic State of attacks on security forces has shown that the group mostly uses quadcopters to conduct specific targeted attacks, with, Iraq with Iraqi officials confirming that the majority of these attacks involve quadcopters. By using these types of UAVs, the attacker is able to hover over a target to provide greater accuracy for the unguided improvised munitions being used. However, other video footage has shown uh, Skywalker X7s and X8s, for example, uh, carrying IEDs being flown, although it is likely that these fixed-wing systems are much more inaccurate a weapon system than the quadcopters. As stated before, most of the munitions appear to be improvised, either repurposing conventional munitions, uh, such as mortar rounds or 40mm grenades, or by creating large quantities of homemade devices, often involving injection molded casings. Indeed, the Combating Terrorism Center reported in January the group's program for weaponizing UAVs was institutionalized since 2015. Although we've concentrated on the Islamic State here, it is likely that the highly publicized use of offensive UAVs by the group will have led to other groups from across the ideological spectrum to take notice of the potential high impact their attacks would have, from other Islamist groups to far-right groups, for example. Growing global tension and the increased role of UAVs in future operations will stimulate strong growth in demand in the defense and security UAV market. And over the next 10 years, this will increase at 8% CAGR, totaling $94 billion of sales. 74,000 UAV units are forecast to be delivered, and 84% of the value will stem from high altitude, medium altitude, and large tactical UAVs. In the US, a key driver has been the success with which Russian-backed forces are using smaller UAS in the Crimea. There's also the developing UAV capability of enemy forces in general, including terrorist groups now with weaponized small UAVs adapted from civil types. The U.S. Army strategy mainly addresses UAS groups 1 to 3, since they pose challenges to the force that are less effectively countered by existing systems. The strategy proposes a whole force approach, including mission command, detection, identification, and defeat. To date, the U.S. government has ordered the drone defender point-and-shoot non-kinetic solution to defend airspace. Also, the U.S. Army has identified the addition of counter-UAS capability to the ANTPQ-53 radar as an urgent operational requirement. The radar is employed in counter-fire role and used as a part of a wider counter-rocket artillery and mortar system. In Europe, NATO has a project to detect, locate, track, and gain control over UAVs. The UK government is addressing counter-UAS technology as part of a wider strategy on unmanned systems via the counter-UAV Central Office of Information. For the radar market, there is strong reason for optimism. Earlier this month, according to Michael Mauser, a partner in PricewaterhouseCoopers Drone Division, he said it was too early to estimate the size of the counter drone market, and this is true. The number of solutions is becoming increasingly vast, 
while the requirements for national defense agencies and militaries are still being defined. What is known is the requirement for three main components, detection, classification, and neutralization. Unlike Silent Archer and the TPQ-53, Elbit Systems is specifically designing its redrone system to detect, identify, track, and neutralize small unmanned aerial systems. Redrone's open system architecture is designed to enable multiple hardware configurations, including an array of controllers and sensors for target detection, tracking, and engagement. The heart of the system is the ability to conduct short-range detection and jamming. Elbit Systems provides the signals intelligence, jamming capability, and EOIR solution, while a third party provides the redrone's radar. As noted on the slide, the ground-aware system was originally developed to secure commercial airports against trespassers on foot, unauthorized vehicles, and intrusions via waterways. Even recently, in January 2016, the contractor sold its ground-aware radar system for all-weather perimeter surveillance in two airports in Colorado, Denver International and the Grand Junction Regional Airport. This low-cost system is now being repitched as a low-cost counter UAS option. In 2016, Mike Stokes, the company's ground-aware product manager, said the radar could detect humans and animals out to three kilometers and vehicles and UAS out to five. Leonardo's Falcon Shield, first displayed at the DSEI in London in 2015, combines long-range thermal electro-optical infrared cameras and radars under the Vantage command and control frame framework and human-machine interface to detect UAVs and utilizes RF jamming and optional kinetic effectors to neutralize the threat. Besides UAV targets, the Falcon Shield system can potentially offer a counter-rocket artillery and mortar function using its Vantage framework to integrate with higher command and control systems. The product has been entirely com company funded and the company announced that the system would be available for purchase when it is full, fully mature. Japan is also developing a high-energy laser weapon system which can be integrated with the DDS system to neutralize UAVs. In January 2017, Radar received an order for its RPS-42 radar for integration with a high-energy laser system for countering UAVs and UV shorad threats. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency is currently in source selection for the first systems under its Mobile Force Protection Program. DARPA program officials expect to make awards in May 2017 and select the initial MFP system by the end of 2017. Now, MFP's goal is to protect mobile forces, and in particular those high-value convoys against a range of threats that include the new threat from small UASs. Systems chosen for this program must be able to initially demonstrate the ability to defend against two to six UASs. The U.S. Navy is investigating, experimenting, and deploying a variety of technologies and systems. The Navy anticipates prototype development and field testing for future increments in the next few years. Rapid prototyping, acquisition, and fielding activities are designed to jumpstart and better inform what is expected to be future counter UAS programs of record. Now, the Department of Defense is stepping up its efforts to combat the threat posed by unmanned systems. The effort is taking a look and feel of works to, done similarly with counter IEDs during the early years of operations enduring in Iraqi freedom. The DOD needs to understand what industry UAS systems do so that the armed services can better understand how to counter them. Uh, unfortunately, I said that this is going to have to wrap things up now. We've uh, run over slightly. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we look forward to you joining us for future briefings, uh, the next of which is coming up on the 20th of April and is on the topic of insurgency trends in the MENA region. Mm -hmm.